Please welcome Doug McGowan, a contributor on Historic Mysteries and author of the book, The Strange Affair of Madeline Smith. Doug, welcome to the program. It is a pleasure to be here to discuss this interesting case. So Doug, what made you interested about writing a book on Madeline Smith? I first came across Madeline Smith when I was doing some research for some articles for a magazine I was writing. And I came across this research book called A Scottish Post Bag, which was basically a series of letters written by various Scottish people throughout the centuries. And I came across this one from a woman named Madeline Smith from the 1850s that I had never heard of. And it said that she was accused of this crime of killing her lover. And um, I was intrigued because I was sort of a true crime buff, especially Victorian true crime like Lizzie Borden and Jack the Ripper. And so I thought, this is really interesting. I, was, I wanted to find out more, so I went to my local library. And by chance, they actually had a book written about her, which I read. But I discovered that all of the books that were written about her were between like 30 and 40 years old, and nobody had taken a look at this case in quite a while. So I thought if I could find information on her and new information to present, I would go ahead and make this my first book project. So I went through various libraries. I went through buying books on the Internet. I even snuck in once to the Stanford Law Library to see what they had. And I got all of this information together, and there was some new information about her later life that I thought I could present for the first time. And so that's how I came about writing the book in 1998, and it was published in 1999. Doug, give us a little bit of a background on Madeline Smith and Emile's relationship. And how did he die? And why did the country of Scotland, and for the rest of the world for that matter, follow this trial so closely? A primary thing to keep in mind for this story is that it took place in the 1850s, which was the height of the Victorian era when it came to etiquette. So the two principles of this, of this story, Madeline Smith was the wealthy daughter of a wealthy architect in Glasgow, Scotland. And Emile Eliangler, who was not wealthy, was in fact a warehouse clerk in Glasgow and was a native of Jersey in the Channel Islands, which made him a foreigner which kind of made him of the lower classes anyway. They were introduced by a mutual friend and began seeing each other with the knowledge of some of Madeline's family. However, when the father found out, he forbade her from seeing Emile anymore. And so she tried to break things off with Emile and Emile convinced her to continue seeing him and also continue writing letters to him in secret. This continued for two years where they were writing back and forth to each other and they would occasionally see each other within the Smith family house when everybody was out of the house except for Madeline. The Smith family, not knowing that she had was continuing to see Emil, set up a very nice engagement with a wealthy young man <clears throat> that they wanted her to marry. Madeline again tried to break things off with Emil and this time, Madeline refused to do so and threatened to show her letters to her father. This was a violation because, in fact, they had swore that they were destroying each other's letters as the correspondence continued. She had gotten rid of and burned all of his letters as they came and arrived, but he had actually kept them and stockpiled them. So he threatened to send these letters to her father. She begged him not to do so and promised that they would continue on in their clandestine relationship. A short time later, Emile dies. The police find Madeline's letters, and the autopsy shows that Emile had died of arsenic poisoning. The police go through the local apothecaries and find that Madeline had in fact made arsenic purchases recently, but she claimed that she used them as a, as a cosmetic. Nonetheless, the circumstantial evidence was certainly good enough that they had a case against her and they arrested her. The scandalous nature of this, both the class differences between the victim and the, and the supposed murderer, <clears throat> the fact that w wealthy women did not generally go to trial for things like this and that if she was found guilty, she would be, she would be executed, led to, what, led to massive newspaper coverage that, that the Victorian era populace just sucked up like a sponge and it led to what they was later called the trial of the century. Did it surprise you that the jury deliberated for only 30 minutes and came to a verdict of not proven? It does not particularly surprise me that they found her not proven after such a short amount of time. Not proven is a specifically a Scottish verdict, which means that you're not innocent, but that the prosecution did not make a strong enough case to find you guilty. 
Now, you have to remember that this was a jury of 12 men who probably wouldn't, it would be very unlikely that they would find a young, pretty woman of the higher class guilty of a crime that would lead to her execution. Also, the evidence was purely circumstantial and that the jury probably kept to that because although Madeline had made purchases of arsenic, Emil died of arsenic poisoning, they were never, the prosecution was never able to prove that at any time between Madeline's first purchase of arsenic and Emil's death that they had met face to face. So I think that the jury was basically looking for any possible reason not to convict her and that that was why she received the not proven verdict. Doug, I'm sure you know I'm going to ask this question. So do you think Madeline Smith killed Emil? I get asked this question a lot, and my purpose in writing the book and the way I wrote it was to present the factual information of the case as we knew it and to let the reader decide whether or not she was guilty or not. So I really never answer this question because I want everybody to come up with their own solution. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to leave it at that. Doug, thank you very much for spending some time with us to discuss this very interesting case. Thanks. I enjoyed this, and I hope that other people find this as interesting as I do.